Hi guys, it's Nico again and I will be meeting Michael. He is engineer at Bosch Motorsport and we will be talking about class one rule, regular more and parts and we get some technical insights. Let's go. Hello, my name is Michael Stamms. I'm a manager, I have a team, a small team which takes care of customer support and any advice the customer needs to design a new car. Hi Michael. Nico. Good to see you. Yeah, pleased to meet you. You are a race engineer or engineer at Bosch and uh, where are we here and you've got some parts with you. We've got some parts here. Um, these parts are all parts from an actual DTM car. Okay. Here within this nice location we are at Bosch Motorsport in Abstadt. So uh, what do we get here? I'm, I'm, I'm just a driver so try to explain me uh, yeah, for, what, for what are these uh, components. Yeah. These three electronic components are the main components in a DTM car which communicate power, software and which interact with the driver. Okay. So this is the power box. Um, the power box is basically an electronic device which supplies power to the individual um, consumers in the car. So electricity gets in here and the power gets... Uh, yeah. Out to the fuel pumps, to the radio, okay. to the steering wheel, to the sh Whatever um, needs gear power. shift system, exactly. Okay. Everything controlled by that. And it also supplies the power to the engine ECU and the display. These three components in combination, we call this the, let's say, performance line. So this is the base, the uh, yeah, brain, let's say, for the display, which I see while, while driving in the car. Yeah, okay. exactly. And for example, in, in DTM, the display contains um, a lot of software functionality to also interact to race control. Mm -hmm. If race control, for example, sets um, DRS enabled, push to pass enabled, or um, full course yellow, or slow down zone and things like this, the flags, all of this is communicated with a telemetry system, the radio telemetry system, into the car. Then it's transferred from this module in the car via the CAN data bus okay. into the ECU and the ECU then communicates this to the display and finally to you so that you can see within a fraction of a second oh full course yellow or yellow flag I have to slow down okay, and this so is all programmed in this device. I'm not only looking for the marshals but I'm also looking for, for, for the display and the race director puts the button or presses the button and uh, yeah, it, within a few yeah, milliseconds, milliseconds, it finally arrives on the dashboard. Exactly. Yeah. So that's the electronical side, but we also have a mechanical one. Yeah. The, the current DTM or Class 1 engine is a very efficient engine. Efficiency in terms of input by the fuel mass and output um, due to the amount of power. Yeah. So there was a switch from a V8 engine to a, a turbo V4 engine. Uh, yeah. Four-cylinder inline engine, exactly. The V8 engine was a low-pressure injection system. Mm -hmm. And the current system, the four-cylinder turbo engine, um, there's a low-pressure pump, mm -hmm. which supplies the low pressure into this device here. This is the high-pressure pump. And from this high-pressure pump into this um, injector, and then into the combustion chamber. And these injectors are built individually for each customer who has built an engine. Okay. And in this injector, you can see at the front tip yeah. some small holes. Yeah. And these holes determine the angle and the mass flow of the spray mm. of the petrol. The challenge is to burn the petrol completely to make sure that it starts burning properly at the spark plug. And if all of this is given, this is what is needed to run a lean engine. Mm. So less fuel for even more power for or more the same power. power. Yeah. Yeah. What about vibration? When I watched DTM in the first year and in class one, there was a big discussion about vibration. Uh, vibrations were even that bad that the driver said they couldn't feel their, their hands anymore. Yeah. And uh, some, some connectors, for example, for the, for the mirror, uh, they, they got loosened uh, because there were too much vibration yeah. in the end. When you have a four-cylinder inline engine um, and you want to rev it high, there are three forces within this engine that you can't balance. And this means they have to go somewhere into the bearings of the engine and the engine oscillates a lot. So we started the development with this, um, what we call the HDP5, high pressure pump generation five. 
Um, but we found that the vibrations were so strong um, that the pump couldn't withstand the stress. It wasn't specified for this stress. So we had to develop something. You see this flange here? This is, um, I think, three millimeters thick. Yeah. And we had to develop something of the next generation of the Bosch pump. And this flange is significantly stronger, thicker. Yeah. And this was able to withstand the stress. And the final result was this DTM pump, which is now um, used on many, many projects. That's the difference here. That's the, the main difference. That yeah. yeah, clearly visible here. Finally, the product is uh, very, very robust and we have the feedback from the customers that they can run it for several hundred hours. So that's basically the, for, for the class one regular model. Talking that's about DTM, but also Super GT at the same time. Exactly. The, um, the Super GT, um, there was always the dream to have both categories under the same regulations. This yeah. is one reason why they wrote the class one regulations. In Jupiter GT, there are three manufacturers. It's Toyota, Nissan, it's Nismo, Nissan Motorsport and Honda. Very nice people. It was a very challenging time. We have been there with three guys to do a training. At the beginning, I thought this is not getting us anywhere, but we found a way it was with a lot of respect um, and at the end trust, we found a way to, to, I was about to say to convince, but it's not possible to convince. You have to show performance, reliability, um, pay respect, and then at the end it, it worked. It was a very nice time working and still work with the Japanese um, yeah. customers. So in the end of the day, motorsport is also yeah about bringing cultures together and, and working together, it's yeah. teamwork. Yeah. Exactly. Teamwork, you are a project leader of yeah. your team. Um, what's your job at the racetrack? My job is to, uh, let's say, look after the, the big picture. Um, I speak to the project manager in Japan and I talk to the project leader of each individual manufacturer. And at the same time, we have application engineers who are part of the team and software engineers who are also part of the team. This is let's say the, the big family that comes together to make a project like this happening. Mm -hmm. And the engineers, support engineers, I mean, there is always one support engineer for each team. In Japan, um, we started with having support engineers for each team um, because it was so new to them. Mm. Um, in Germany, for the DTM, that was actually not necessary because they have been working with the components in a bit longer. So in Germany, we have one support engineer at the track and in Japan we had more especially for the first races but we also had the help from our Japanese colleagues to also overcome the language barrier. Yeah, yeah. yeah which is something really important I believe. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, when we went to Japan to explain something is one thing and they prefer to ask in Japanese to feel a bit safer. Mm -hmm. So we always made sure that our Japanese colleagues joined every single meeting to show Bosch is working uh, as a global supplier yeah. and not only with a local entity from Germany. So Super GT against DTM. DTM is 55 minutes race. Super GT, they also have long distance races, endurance races uh, with two drivers actually. So they make a driver change. Does it make any difference for you guys to, to work with the Super GT team and to supply the components? Actually, um, for us, it doesn't. Um, the components have to withstand the, the stress of the race, whether it's one hour or three, or I wouldn't, I would even think that they could try a 24 hour race. So this is, um, there's no limit from, from our components point of view. There are some minor differences. Um, Super GT runs a slightly lower injection pressure for the DTM. The regulations allow this, this pump here to produce up to 350 bar. The, pump for um, Japan does actually, uh, there's a limit at 200 bar, so the, the system pressure. Okay. Um, so the, the software is slightly different, components are very much the same, they're actually called EB parts, that's the German word Einheitsbauteile. Yeah. And the Japanese people would also say we need, uh, we request this in this uh, Einheitsbauteile part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the thing is that the Japanese GT500 class was already running um, direct injection systems with a competitor um, electronic system. But there were some key advantages of our system. Um, first, the, the 
communication between the devices is very easy to um, set up and to configure. One main reason was that we have developed and introduced a new piece of functionality and software, a torque guided structure. So you as the driver, you actuate only um, gear shift, mm -hmm. um, steering wheel and accelerator pedal. And the only command you can give to the engine is the accelerator pedal. Yeah. But when you do this, you would probably want at let's say 50% accelerator pedal, you will always want the same power. You don't want a turbo lag, you don't want an overboost or something like this. If the engine has 600 Newton meter, you put the pedal down by 50%, you want 300 Newton meter. When it's dry, when it's wet, and when the sun shines, or when precise. it's raining. Yeah, sure. And this is the torque guided structure software um, makes sure that this actually happens. Um, and all our support and training has finally convinced and the GT500 customers um, to choose Bosch technology for the class one. So in the end of the day, that was the, the base to get together and uh, to, have a, to have a dream race in Fuji, or yeah. even in Hockenheim when they, when they got invited. Yeah, to exactly. Hockenheim and joined the DTM weekend. Um, yeah, to have the same, same rules, same, same regular more yeah. Um, yeah. in that, Japan and in Germany. That was always the, the dream. Um, let's say Hans-Werner Aufrecht from, from HWR as ITR chairman started this. Yeah. Um, Gerhard Berger followed this philosophy. Um, we wanted this. We were like emotionally really involved in this. We wanted to convince um, the Japanese manufacturers, say this is the right technology for you. And this also uh, at the end of the day resulted in us traveling there a couple of times to get together with the people. Um, and when they were here for the race in Hockenheim, we came together, we went out to Ludwigsburg together. There's a very good and very close relationship now between us and, 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 and the Japanese customers. Yeah.